sweet and I want to answer a question that says is there a hormone most often responsible for depression sort of a pattern of sorts yes and as someone also commented it's not just one I mean these hormones are some of the most powerful biochemicals that we have in our body and they all have a complexion a character and um, you name the hormone and it relates to mood. Estrogen, for example, too much, too little, testosterone, too much, mood issue, too little, mood issue, progesterone, too much, mood issue, too little, mood issue. Notice I'm saying mood issue in general because I can't be as specific as I like. They just don't behave like that. Like there's some women that get uh, terribly anxious when their progesterone gets low and others get terribly depressed and some get terribly anger, angry. It's like a key, a, a roadmap into the emotions when you start getting declines in hormone levels and imbalances in hormone levels and there's so many moving parts in there plus the neurotransmitters. These are pretty powerful biochemicals as well. And so I would never nail it to one specific. I could say too much testosterone, irritable. Too little testosterone, lack of motivation and drive. Too much estrogen, irritable and, gr and grumpy with a lot of energy. Too little estrogen, sad, weepy, depressed. Too little progesterone, depressed, anxious. But look at that. That's confusing. But the good news is the process to discover is always the same. And this is what I teach doctors. If a woman of perimenopausal or menopausal age has a long list of symptoms that she comes to you for assistance with, and so often women come with emotional and, and mental and mood issues galore, treat the menopause first and see if there is anything left to deal with. It's that strong uh, uh, approach to things. And then the process is the same. And we're going to send you a link to my book where I describe this in detail. But every woman is so individual. So no big deal. You do, you start with low doses of estrogen and progesterone. That's the most common thing to do. You gradually increase. And the woman sort of figures the, the, the point at which she's getting symptom alleviation. But if she goes too high with a given hormone, she's going to get symptoms of overdose. We actually pass out a laminated card to explain these to, to women. These are the symptoms of too much and too little. And it's a good way to find your way into your optimal balance. Women vary enormously woman to woman. And then you confirm that with testing. And this process, when done precisely and rigorously has hardly ever failed me. And when in doubt, I test along the way. And these hormones are so powerful that if they're going to help you, you're going to get some information along the way. And you can always cut down to one variable and just play with that. You can work with two variables. Some, some, and then you got to bring in three and four variables, different hormones I'm talking about. But what I'd really like to tell you is there is a pathway through looking at the symptoms that you're having. And if you're in perimenopausal age and all of a sudden out of the blue, you are having emotional symptoms, there's a place to start is with those hormones. They're so mood relevant. Every one of them, any powerful biochemical is. And then I would like to say that in order to accomplish this, it comes down to shopping for someone who really knows what they're doing. And also, some education on your part can help. So our, our, our team is going to give you a, a copy to the Kindle or PDF version or a book. Because if you know what's happening on the inside and you get a flavor for each individual hormone and your prescriber gives you the hormones and you start low and you titrate on up, you gradually increase your dosages, my goodness, I assert you're going to find your way and you're certainly going to discover whether mood is related to that. Now, having said that, my God, you're in an age demographic that's called the change of life. What in the heck does that mean? Well, it can mean variable things, and it's not uncommon that emotional and cognitive and life and wisdom issues and skills issues 
that you haven't quite ever dealt with and have been sort of floating beneath the surface, part of the change of life is they start bubbling up. And I never say, oh, it's just a matter of better living through biochemistry. We'll get your hormones right and you'll, we'll get your neurotransmitters right and that's going to totally do it for you. No, it's definitely worth respecting the uncomfortable feelings. Inside of every depression, there's emotions that are getting repressed. There's fear, sadness, anger, shame, guilt, emptiness, meaninglessness, loneliness. That if you have some skills and you acquire the skills and you do your own personal healing process or have a guided healing process with an emotional health professional, mental health professional is really good at it. My goodness, there's so many resources out there to help you with your emotions and your mind these days. So I wouldn't leave that part out. I would respect that it's a change of life. Uncomfortable emotions are coming up for you. What's the rem What's the medicine? Learn about and get skills with the uncomfortable emotions that are coming up for you. You mentioned depression. Well, depression's what's happening when feelings are coming up and you're repressing them. And it gets awfully more specific when I ask a patient, yes, when you feel depressed, what emotion do you feel? And maybe she'll say, well, I feel sad and afraid. And I will say, just breathe and feel and accept that. And I am giving you the truncated version of a tool called feeling, becoming conscious of feelings, feeling them and accepting them as something to do in conjunction with, with uh, working with the biology of what's going on. It can be so important and it can lead you to the best life you've ever lived. If you can do this emotional and mental healing that happens to be coming up with the change of life. That change of life is setting you on the course to the, the spiritual part of your life. That's what we're designed to do. So learn about, embrace, get help with the emotions and the mind and you'll get wiser and have more fun and more love and more happiness. You'll come home more to the truth of who you are. So there's a lot to medicine. Best wishes to you.